Alright guys, welcome back to the channel, Half Fast 719 This is what I was going to do an install video and I decided not to um, I do have other videos and you can watch other videos but this is the Monster Ram intake system with fuel line from Banks Power it's the part number 42790 and there is another part number <clears throat> I think for the powder coated one um, but I didn't get the powder coated one so um, basically I'm just gonna walk you through what you need to do what you don't need to do blah 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 blee 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 um, yeah I'm just setting out some parts here I'll get to those in a second <clears throat> so here we go here's the unveiling So, let me just do a little background story. I didn't do a video because I had an, a co-worker over here picking up some firewood and basically the guy who bought my four, uh, other 4th Gen, my 2012, he came over yesterday while I was doing it. I was doing most of it and I didn't set up the camera because we were talking a lot of crap about certain people. And uh, I didn't want to be out there. I didn't want it to be on camera. Um, yeah, anyway. Just talking about some people that shouldn't have jobs. But whatever. Anyway, that's my background story. Why I didn't film this. So, as you can see. I went black and black. All black. Black lettering. It's not powder coated. <clears throat> it is uh, just a... Uh, High temp, high heat, Krylon paint for barbecues, I guess, up to 600 degrees. So, no rust, no drips, no errors. That's a lie. Um, I mean, I guess if you follow the instructions, there isn't. Um, but anyway, yeah, so basically, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll go to the, the old one real quick. <clears throat> Try not to get dirty because I gotta load and pack up for uh, Illinois. So, anyway, you take off this bolt. This is your dipstick bolt. You take off the five short bolts. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then you gotta take off this long bolt. This long bolt here. So, and those are the five bolts. So, you take that off, you take that off, and then you have to reuse this sensor here so this sensor is a little Torx I can't remember like a T10, T15 Torx and you pull the sensor out make sure you lubricate that o-ring before you put it in the new one you have to disconnect this connector which is kind of a pain in the butt I took this whole thing off so imagine it's sitting in the truck like this and you gotta take it off that's that connector well I couldn't get to it because it's got one of those stupid clips that go in this way so I loosened this hose uh, the hose clamp loosened the hose stuck a screwdriver in here and basically walked it around that's why you see those little scratches from a little screwdriver <clears throat> worked it around and then this way I was able to twist this whole thing to get to that stupid connector because that connector is a pain in the butt ouch on my uh my 2012 I actually broke the little red tab that's on that stupid connector um but yeah so and then once you get this off you have to take your cold side tube off so you gotta un unscrew or unloosen or loosen i guess if you unloosen it you're tightening it anyway loosen this hose clamp here those are 11 millimeter, 7 sixteenths, whichever one you want to use. Um, you take that whole charge tube off, and <clears throat> and then you get, if you buy this one with this part number, with the 4 inch opening and not the 3.5 inch opening, you have to take that hose off. You got to take the hose off that tube, and uh, just use caution when you do this. So this is the hose clamp that I took off. So you just want to make sure you don't go too deep. 
um, because you'll end up cutting this boot. And if you're going to go back to stock or if you're going to reuse stuff, um, I always reuse it. I always keep it. So you can see, you can see where I barely grazed it. So um, I barely grazed it there and along that little angle. So I will have to find another hose clamp because these are just pressed on there or clamped on there. However, I do have plans to buy the Banks uh, hot and cold uh, boost tubes, I guess you can call them. So be careful when you do this if you're going to reuse these boots. Um, just don't go too deep. Just skim it, skim it, skim it. And then you have this is the stock fuel line. Um, you have to change that fuel line. So you cut that that strap off around the boot, the tube, and then you can stick the new boot on there, the Banks boot, the Banks booty which goes from I think three to four inch or maybe it's three and a half to four inch whatever it is and then take a 19 millimeter and you loosen the, the hose or the line the fuel line that's down there the silver thing and then you loosen it over here <clears throat> definitely use a line wrench because if you don't use a line wrench you'll round that you'll round those nuts whatever you want to call them you'll round those fittings um and then after you replace that fuel line you'll want to tighten it obviously with the 19 millimeter line wrench and then start running these screws these screws are these what i did so you have one under here that goes all the way through and you have a gasket obviously clean the gasket surface clean that really good um you run that I run that screw first while this whole thing's off. So I just put it in and then I stick that Allen wrench thing that comes with it. It's a big long like eight inch <clears throat> Allen wrench. It's just the Allen wrench, it's not a an L wrench, it's just the shaft. You stick that in there on the screw, and then you stick the gasket on there, then you slide it in there, and then start that screw first. And then you got your two long screws, and then you got three shorter screws. You got one that's in the center that's really hard to get to, which, I don't know if you can see it, it's right next to the line. That one's really hard. That one is metal, I guess, so it's magnetized, so you can take a magnet and drop it down in there. All the other ones are all stainless steel, so those you really can't do. And this one back here, that one back there is a Pain in the butt too. I don't know if you could see it or not. Mm, barely. Anyway, it's back there. It's a pain in the butt to get to. And uh, yeah, that one I ended up using needle nose pliers and dropping it in the hole and then tightening it. <clears throat> you will have, there's a bracket back here. So I'll show you on the old one. So there's a wiring harness bracket before you can get this off. You've got a 10 millimeter uh, bolt back here. You undo that bolt, the bracket comes off, and uh, you want to put that bracket and bolt in before you connect this. You can put this, this thing in because now on the Banks one, it's back here. It's way back here. So it doesn't sit up at top, it sits back here. <clears throat> so in the connector the when you plug it in it blocks this bolt so definitely put this bolt in first with the little metal tang that comes off of the wire and harness put that in then you connect the connector um, and make sure you use oil on that o-ring because and it's it's a nightmare to get it in I had to go drink some uh, protein drink to get it to go in and then you'll want to reuse this uh, it's a, uh, I don't know, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, it's a bolt with a little uh, stud. Yeah, it's a stud. Basically, it's a bolt with some threads on it so you can put a wiring harness on. So, <clears throat> as you can see, it's this stud here. So you can put that harness on. 
So don't tighten this one here and don't tighten this one down there. You can tighten that one, the new clamp that you put on or that you reused on the bottom of that boot. You can tighten that one and then you got to kind of fight to get this boot all the way up there on there. So I did as I went around, reached around, pulled it up and then started tightening it. And it's the same. It's a 7 16 11 millimeter. <clears throat> then you just torque all the bolts down. I went to, uh, I think I went 18 foot pounds, if I remember right, 18 foot pounds on all the bolts. Um, kind of hard to do, but it is what it is. So I wish I would have had a little part come in that's going to go right there. Because while this was out, I had plenty of room. And if I would planned better, then uh, the jobs would go a lot smoother. But anyway, so yeah, so it's all installed. I started the truck up. It takes a little bit to start up because now you don't have any fuel in the number one cylinder or in the fuel line. And then you just obviously reattach your oil dipstick. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, all these come out. All these little uh, set screws for whatever you're running, nitrous, uh, whatever, whatever you're running. Those all come out, and there's one back here, and whatever. Uh, there's two more of these back there, and then a bigger one. I don't know what the bigger one is for. I'm thinking methanol injection, um, but yeah, I don't know. And then this one is just for the access for the bolt that goes in there so anyway uh yeah i like this design a lot better than any other designs especially since it comes with that fuel line <clears throat> that fuel line um makes it so the banks can make the the most airflow whereas a lot of companies where that fuel where this stock fuel line goes um they basically cut they cut that intake, the airflow, they cut it and it basically, the air comes in, hits a wall. Anyway, you can go onto Banks Power YouTube page, wherever you want to go and uh, you can check that video out. He goes into detail how they made it, how much more airflow it has, more than like the AFE, um, the pusher intake, There's a lot of, a lot of companies he basically calls out, that's why. I was, Gail Banks, he's like, he's like my hero, I guess you could say. Like the guy I look up to because he's just so smart on all everything he does. And that's why I use Banks products for that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> and I will, Monday, I'll be getting this, a new one of these. Uh, I'll be getting the piece that goes down there. It's from uh, Black Market Performance. It's basically a cat filter um, it deletes that filter and uh, yeah so it deletes this whole thing right here so you just basically take your water sensor out which is right down there and you tee it into the other one and then it's basically it's a real simple design it goes fuel in fuel up fuel out um, it comes with some hoses, some adapters, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I wish I would have had that sooner so that I could have done it when I did this install. So, anyway guys, that's going to be it for this video. I got a mess of tools to clean up. Um, yeah, just a big mess of tools to clean up. And uh, this isn't just for that install. This was for um, a lot of other things I did. That I've been lazy and haven't wanted to clean up. So just remember, go easy on this strap. And if you're going to reuse it, you're going to have to buy another uh, strap, another band, whatever you want to call it, a clamp to reuse this hose. So in all my stock parts for my emission stuff, I put all my stock stuff all in a container. And it all goes in my barn so it doesn't get any dust. It doesn't get any anything because of where I live 
every two years I have to put it back on. So, all right, guys. Thank you for guys for watching. If you guys have any comments, do you want any specifics, um, any questions? Um, I answer pretty quick within a day usually. So if you guys have questions, because I know like Gail Banks, those bigger companies out there, they don't really answer any questions. And then tell you get like three or four questions. Even on Instagram, I've asked them a bunch of questions for my kids first gen. And uh, they still haven't answered them. They answered me, say sorry we missed your question and sorry we didn't answer. And that's it. But they never answer the question. But anyway, I guess that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Later.